Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Diaz, Jose Huerta, Jesus Sanchez. But he's naming us. Diaz. Jose Huerta. And Jesus Sanchez. And now it's your turn, Monetero. Monetero? <laughs> Ain't you fast enough to go gunning for him? Faster. You can bet your last dollar on it.
Hey, Mulligan, what's it feel like to sleep on $300,000? Makes a pretty hard bed. $300,000 is a lot of money, Captain. I hope you're aware of my responsibility. Listen, why don't you relax? You'll wear yourself out. You've nothing to fear. The directors of my bank entrusted that money to me. I wouldn't want anything to happen to it. To be precise, it was entrusted to me and the men who guard it. What are you afraid of, Mr. Clayton? Everything. Anything. You see, I have an excellent record at the bank. Well, I'm up for a very important promotion. They would have been wise to send another man with fewer worries. Put yourself in my shoes. I'm risking my whole career. Your career isn't in danger, Clayton. Goal to reach its destination, only a fool would dare attack us. Yeah. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. It's best to be prepared for anything. That fellow called Monetero is just that crazy. To attack a train with an armed guard aboard? Come on. Not even Monetero would have the guts to do that. Well, I hope you're right. Hangman's Rock. Coming up. Hey, hombres, the train will not wait for us. Bandits? No. Uh, your precious gold isn't going to be lost. Just try and relax, Clayton. Hey, look! Stop the train! Hey, hold the poles in there! Stop the train! Hey, uh, hey what happened? Tell the captain there's a telegraph pole on the track. Come on. First squad, report to the front of the train. On the double. Well, get on with it. Anderson, get a shovel. The rest of you spread out and keep your eyes open. Go on, get it off the track. I better make sure the gold's all right. Very well. Come on, hurry it up there. Watch the wire, man. Careful. Where's that shovel? Hey, Corporal. Is everything all right in there? Yes, sir. Good. That's it, man. Now hold it steady. Steady. Hold it steady. Easy. That's got it. That'll hold it, men. Back on the train. Come on, hurry. the insurance and I'd be dismissed. You'd lose your job, so that's why... I wouldn't want anything to happen to it. You're obsessed with bandits, Mr. Clayton. I don't think this Monotero even exists. People made him up to scare their kids. Ain't no one gonna attack us with this sitting up here. Mm -mm, it's the gun for the job. Fire up! 
Joe. Hey, Corporal! Corporal, a couple of bastards! Stop! Engineers, stop! The coaches are cut loose! Hey, stop! Captain! That's the gold car! My God, you're right. Sergeant! We're highballing, Joe. Are we stopping? Oh! <laughs> it's a raid. Take that side. shooting that guy. Where are you going? Out. I figure there's no point in waiting around.
$300,000 robbery. The reward ought to go up to at least 15000 which would make it 5%. That's not bad at the price. All right, Collins. Get back to the fort. Tell him to send reinforcements. Captain, some protection from you and your troops. You let Monadero walk away with $300,000. I'll get the bandits soon, Clayton. I'll bet darn few survive. Fewer the better, too. Get the double crosser, the dirty traitor. After all I've done for him, him and his whole family, now he betrays me. Paco, Guapa, we split up. I want Pajondo alive. See, si, Monetero. Alive, you understand? Muy bien. Vosotros conmigo. Vámonos. is one of them all right, Clayton. Looks like that $300,000 is making them fall out among themselves. <laughs> Listen to the music, eh? This is the music that does my heart good to hear. <laughs> ah, but this is only a little small change, Charo, eh? <laughs> but think of that mountain of gold for Hongo. A mountain to divide only two ways. But only at the right time, Charo. Because now is the time to hide away in Mexico. The dumb gringos will never catch us. <laughs> this will blow over. And when it does, only you and I will know where we hid it. You and Charo. <laughs> <laughs> Not now, Charo. Oh. Just me and this medallion. The dog with two heads and the dragon with wings will guard that gold. <laughs> Charo Ruiz, $200 reward. Not worth the trouble of carting them in. Poor Charo. Even alive, you wouldn't have been worth any more. <laughs> well, at least you helped me out showing the way to Trescientos Mil Dollars. <laughs> Gracias, amigo. Frontier. 
across the river where it may go. Vamos! We'll come back. Uh, when the trouble blows over, we'll come back for the gold. I'll be richer than a banker. Uh, and you'll be rich too, Caballito. You have a manger of solid silver and a harem of caballitas. Abundancia, niñas, bajándose fuerte, bajándose rico. Trescientos mil dólares. For you. Uh, the hiding place is what this medallion shows. It is for you. Who's for you? And all the money is there. You will see. You wait. But do not stare at me. Do not just stare at me. Whatever I did, it was for your sake. I swear it. This shows where is the money. very well, Captain, but I'm not interested in bandits. I'm concerned about the gold, and it's still missing. But Monotero's here, and with him we'll get the gold. If you want my opinion, questioning him, it's a wasted time. Your friend Monotero might be a whole lot cleverer than you realize. His capture was awful easy for you. <laughs> Still, I'll find a means to relax his tongue. There's just one thing I can tell you, General. What's that? This place is full of bugs. And they got more brains than your sergeant. He killed the only man who knew where the gold is buried. Make up another story. There's a train carrying gold. 
And the great Monetero robs the train in front of my eyes. But the only one of his bandits who could recover the gold is very stupid. He got shot. Yes, maybe you're right. Maybe he's dead. But in any case, if you don't tell me where the gold is, you'll be shot too. Go on, shoot me. I don't give a damn. But nobody will ever find that goal again. Shoot him? Am I hearing you right? You want to shoot Monetero? That's right. Captain, Monetero's the only one we've got alive. He's the one man alive who can show us where the gold's buried, and you want to shoot him? That is correct, Mr. Clayton. You don't know these men. Monetero will talk when he's good and scared. But do not delude yourself. Not before he's eye to eye with a firing squad. And what if your firing squad fails to scare him? You shoot? Mm-hmm. Mm. There'll be one bandit less than Clayton to rightly condemn the hellfire. Follow me. This way, Padre. He's in here. Thank you. You may leave us, my son. I'll leave you, but you be careful, Padre. He's mean as a hungry wolf. He is our brother in the Lord. <coughs> Kneel down, my son. Still be confused. Stranger, huh? What did you do? Smell a corpse? You dirty buzzard. Maricon. Anything wrong, Padre? No. Nothing at all. He's struggling with his conscience, my son. Mm. <laughs> He's strong, miserable sinner. You have been running after me for a year for that reward. Now you can go to hell with it. Where's the gold, Monetero? The gold? What you want it for? The church? The poor children? <clears throat> I haven't got any time to play. Let's make a plan, Monetero. Hey. Can you get me out of here? I might have thought. Trescientos mil dollars are a pretty good reason for doing it. But my part's 50%. I don't know where the gold is. But I got one clue. Have you got a knife? You get over there. Life insurance, stranger. Monetero still in? I brought his last meal. Sure is. They're treating him well. Father, you forgot to bless me. Huh. Padre, 
Come in, my son. He's as pure as a lamb. Yeah, thanks. Just a minute. Did he tell you where he hid it? Where he hid the gold? The confession of his secret, my son. Uh... Monetero's been captured. They've got him in prison. Maldito Sands. Vamos! Vamos! Andale! I must urge you again, Captain. If this harms the interest of the bank, my boss is going to be very upset. It's my duty. Mr. Clayton. Up, two, three, four. Up, two, three, four. Up, two, three, four. Keep moving, you. I said keep moving. Hold it. Get on with it, Sergeant. What are you waiting for? Get moving. Forward. Hard. Hip, two, three, four. Hip, two, three. I'd feel I'd failed society if I spared that man. I'd call that a poor luck medal. Well, Monetero, what have you to say? Let's hear it. Got the facts straight in that slippery mind of yours since yesterday? You talk too damn much. If you're going to shoot a man, go ahead and shoot him. Get it over with. Got a game? Are 
you hurt, sir? hadn't helped me, friend, I would have been done for. I'd like to thank you. What are you thanking me for? It was just business, that's all. You caught him, I shot him. Quite a coincidence. No, there's nothing coincidental about it, my friend. If I'd have let you, you'd have shot me out of collecting a tidy sum. Wait a minute. May I ask who you are? They call me the stranger. Show me if you got the other half of the medallion on you. I haven't got it. <laughs> you lousy cowboy. Well, if that's how you want it, shut up and strip. I haven't got it, I tell you. I'll see for myself. You know who's got it? That damn gringo from the bank. Mr. Coincidence. Come on, I said strip. Oh, I'm embarrassed. I get embarrassed. I only take my clothes off when I... Well, now you're going to take them off anyway, Monetero. Hola, Monetero! Hola, guapa. No wonder I like you. Hello, Paco. Surprise, huh? All right, cowboy. Get down. Uh, the metal. Never pays to do favors. I got a rule. When there's a man to shoot, shoot to kill. But with you, I didn't keep it, Monetero. You're very funny. Did you hear that, Wapa? He's a very funny character. If you want my opinion, Monetero, not very many hombres are funny like you. I wouldn't spare any gringo because he did your favor. But he is really muy simpatico. Too bad it is all a mistake. Yeah, too bad. Can I smoke?
Yes, ought to raise you to 25,000. There's nobody like you, Monetaro. You're such a darn good investment, I couldn't kill you yet. Have you found it yet? No, it's not in this one. <laughs> Just as I thought. That's the 1830 register of land grants and title records. I told you you should start looking at the 18th century one. That's just what I want. Can I see it? Just a minute. Firmino. Firmino! I'm coming, I'm coming. What is it, Mr. Mendoza? Have you located that 18th century register? Mr. Mendoza, have a little patience. I keep telling you these archives are in much too much disorder. Ah, uh, you'll never make the grade, Firmino. Look, mister, this is extremely important. Uh, he's still an apprentice. He'll learn in time. Uh, can't you come back tomorrow? Taco! I should let you know, is fully covered by insurance. Let me ask you a question. Who are you? Backman. Lawrence Backman, Allied Insurance. The company paying the bank nearly a third of a million dollars. That's real bad luck. Apparently, the robbery was the work of Monetaro, a man you've killed. And apparently, the consignment of gold is not recoverable. Not for so big a sum. <laughs> I wouldn't know. It's not my business to go looking for the money, is it? Suppose it happens that Monetaro shows up again. Hmm? Remarkable. Then I assume the supposition doesn't offend you. No. Nobody can hear you. Fine. Well, let's begin by summing up. Nearly a third of a million dollars was traveling under the scrutiny of one of the bank's most trusted employees, a certain Mr. Clayton. Thanks a lot. What's your name? Samson. Samson! Do not annoy the customers. Come help me in the kitchen. This 
soup's good. That's right. We're here to get something, Clayton. Something you got. It means a whole lot to... to Monetero. Monetero? Monetero's dead. <laughs> and let's put it like this, to his heirs. You know what we're talking about, don't you? Sure you do. That piece of medallion. Want to finish your food, Mr. Clayton? Before we kill you? And the Lord said, thou shalt not kill. I am sorry, Samson always gets too familiar with the customers. Forgive the disturbance. I run a quiet place, the quietest place in town. Are you telling me your name? Conchita, senor. All right, Conchita, bring us some wine. Si, senor. How many times must I tell you, do not shoot the customers? Hey, are you sure these four are really dead? Mm hmm. Hmm. And Monetero? Would have been sacrilege to take that reward. Every day I wait, it goes up thousands of dollars. And you help it along. Yep. After all, Clayton, when you get down to it, everyone's out for himself, right? Here we are. I have brought the wine, senores. It's the best we have there. Gracias, senor. Samson, come and clean up. There are bodies all over the floor. Well, let's tell you. Ah. Something that tells me that we got a mutual problem. I figure we ought to talk it out. Hmm? But first, let's split the bottle. Fix up a bed for him. I brought a bottle we can share. Maybe that's not a bad idea. Where did he go? 
He's been gone more than an hour. Where to? In the red direction, he says, along the river. Mata! Mata totos! Bang, bang! <laughs> Come on! Yeah! You must have got up real early this morning. <laughs> Get up. Get up. <laughs> Why, you're still drunk. Is this some kind of hoedown? That way sounds almost complimentary, Clayton. And you're a liar. Come on. Too much. You've had enough. Me? I say we both have. All right then. Hand over that half crest. What for? I want to find that cash. For the bank, huh? Afraid you better come up with something better than that. Come on, let's hear the real reason. I must find that cash. Well, let's suppose you pocket it all. Bet your boots that 300,000 will be hard to carry. Well, our half safe in there. Sure about that? Don't you trust anyone? No, not really. But I'm afraid I gotta make an exception with you. <laughs> Come on then, partner.
we got company. You'd better keep going. I'll cover you from behind. Don't worry. I'd appreciate it. venir con nosotros. Come with us. Uh, of course. It's a beautiful sombrero. Senor <coughs> Clayton, where are you going? Do not make trouble. enough of your tricks, Senor Clayton. How come are you? Monitero. No me mates. Don't shoot, Hefe. It's me, Pablo. You have no manners. You should knock first. Next time you do that, I'll blow your head off. Paco Semi, Cadel Gringo. Bueno, get out. Muy bien. ¿Cómo estás, mi corazón? ¿Estás bien? Te despertaron. 
Ay, qué cosa tan bonita. At last we meet again, Clayton. Where's the half of that medallion? I haven't got it. <laughs> Shut up. Go away, all of you. Where are? Vamos, muchachos. What a fool you made out of me. I organized the raid, uncoupled the wagon, and you, the great Monetero, let yourself be cheated out of the money. Some partner I chose. Yeah. Pajondo double cross me. God bless his soul. Out of hell with him. Where is the other half of the coin? I told you, I haven't got it. The stranger has it. You should have sent your men after him, not me. The stranger, huh? The big maricón. If I don't kill him soon, I'm going to end up getting nervous one of these days. You should be nervous now. He's got just as good a chance of finding that $300,000 as you do. If I just had that medallion, both halves, then he'd have to deal with me. Remember, I'm the only one who can decipher it. Yeah, yeah, I know. You're one of those politicos who went to school and reads a lot of books and studies a lot. Look, I've got an idea. I'll tell the stranger that the 300,000 is hidden in a well. The coin commission well. The coin commission? Yeah. Hey, I'll be there. And while we're coming, dig a grave. Then we'll go for the money. I'll pay you one big compliment. You are one damn smart hombre. When the stranger sees this, he'll believe anything I tell him. See you at Cuenco, amigo. Amigo, amigo, amigo. <laughs> oh, yeah, Paco. Si, sí, Monetero. Show my friend through. Hey, you, get the gringo his horse. Get some men and follow him. De acuerdo. What got into you? <laughs> <laughs> ah, that Mr. Clayton is a very nice man. Very nice. And you trust that Senor Clayton? Why not? You know how much two half coins make? No, I don't. Two dead men. Three hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Let's go, Papa. Mi querido. Let him be, Monetero. Can't you see he's dreaming about gold? One that's so funny. Yeah. I was just talking about you. Yeah, I imagine you had been. You do business like a sly old jackal. Monotero never bargained with gringos. Oh, yes, Guapa, with me he did. We agreed to divide the gold. The whole lot. Right down the middle. 
And as a proper gentleman, I always keep my word. Even if I have to lose that 30,000 on his head. Of course, if anyone should ever find out how easy you get taken in, it'll go down to $30. What do you mean? Clayton just outfoxed you. Outfoxed you like he did me this morning. He did? He's got the other half of the medal. Ah, que lash. Si agarro al gringo desgraciado, te voy a cortar el pescuezo. Le voy a sacar las tripas. Y lo voy a hacer chicharrón. Por vía de Dios santo. Now he's going to go and look for that goal alone. He won't get it, though. There's something he needs to hunt that gold alone. And he isn't going to find it. <laughs> but you're sure it was here, right? It was this morning, but now I can't find it. It was here. I'll bet that absent-minded old fool took it. Mr. Mendoza? What is it? Where's the 18th century title register? Ah, oh, yes, of course. But this morning I lent it to that friend of yours. Are you telling me the stranger? Yes, yes. He told me he'd come at your orders. But something else, too. Pinino, what was it? He wanted to know. I've no idea, sir. You must. But if he asked you, Pinino, how would I know? You were also was? present, weren't you? Try to recollect. I think I'm only an apprentice. Ah, yes. He asked directions to the bears the public use. But, Mr. Mendoza, do you think it's wise to let him read one of our registers in the bathhouse? No guns allowed in here. It's the first thing you take off. Man's death. Hey, you, I said no guns allowed in here. Now, wait your turn. <coughs> hey, Gonzalez, the rinse water! Si, sí, senor. Hey, I'm going to over here. Si, sí, senor. I'm next there. Ah, hey, come back over here. See if you can wash my back now, will you? I'll roll in a second. You know. Somehow I got the feeling you've been following me around. Now I see you're busy soaking up culture. In Spanish. My Spanish isn't as good as it should be. <laughs> I took it out for you. Yeah. You better not try and tell me that the gold has been hidden. Some place at the mission in Cuenca. Where's the medallion? Huh? Hmm. It's beautiful, isn't it? No guns allowed in here. I said, take off your gun. Cayete. This is it. Winged dragon, two-headed hound. The Montego coat of arms. Ancient family of conquistadores established in the Sierra Guarani, 1597. Let's see. Battled the Indians and took their lands. Ah, in 1789, supported the cause of independence, but their hacienda was destroyed by the troops of General Ribera. The Sierra Guarani. You stopped the train not far away. Half a day's riding would have got your friends there. Let me see. There is a ruined house on one side of the Sierra Guarni. 
On which side? I wouldn't have thought it mattered. In time, you'll see, partner. So we're partners now, are we? You and I are both good for $150,000. Where do you think you're going, mister? You heard me, friend. 
The stranger got away. You did, huh? You're a damn liar. And I'm gonna kill you. I don't think you will. Because I know what the $300,000 are. You do, huh? You sure? Don't fool around with me, Clayton. I warn you. Trust me. All right, amigo. I trust you. Come on, then, and I'll show you. Strange, this door. Yeah, too easy. Well, we figured you'd need our help to count all that money. It's two against one, and I ain't about to lose my head. Yeah, might even say I'm prepared to consider making a deal. Three-way split, huh? But of course, share and share alike. Hmm, sure, why not? Why in the hell did you say so before? Because I'm obliged, friend. I'm obliged to shoot at anyone who starts shooting at me like you did. Es lo que andaba yo buscando. Esto es lo que yo quiero. Mira lo más que música tan bonita. Put that Mira. back where it was, Monotero. You heard him. Congratulations, stranger. 
excellent work. You dirty traitor. And if you look in the chest, Mr. Backman, you'll find the rest of it. Want to check it? Not now. After all, your reputation in your profession should assure full value. My advice is to see it's all as per contract. Come on, look at it. Hmm. One bag, which I promised when the job was complete. According to our bargain, those two are mine. There's a big reward for Monetero. And the bank should be posting a good one on Clayton, too. Well, I'm off. I'm anxious to get to Boston. For this time, I'll be in Clover. And I hope, in case you're there, you'll look me up. I doubt it. There's never been a bounty to collect in Boston. Querido. I'm ready, my dear. I know we mustn't miss the train. It's true. I... I'm leaving too, Monetero. If I didn't, I'd miss a fabulous chance. Understand? There's nothing for me here any longer. It's all right, Wapa. What the hell's the difference? Everybody around here is unfaithful anyway. Nice to have met you, Senor. My Malay. pleasure. Um, load it up on the buggy instead. All right. And put a cover on it. I'll be right with you. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, I'll see you in Boston, won't I? Please, Senor. All right. Hurry up, my dear. Put up your hands. Come on, reach. Go on. You damn fool. You're not going to let him get away with all that money, are you? I never did trust him, insurance man. Look, stranger, why don't we just risk our necks to get ten bags of stones? Bags of what? Stones? You fellas didn't think there was gold in that chest, did you? <laughs> Poor Mr. Buckman. He thought he was so clever, like you two. Hey, what if Buckman had checked those bags? Then what? I'd have been satisfied with the reward for turning you in. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't laugh yet, Clayton. Don't forget the one they'll post on you. You're going to have to pay me that 30,000 reward on you to stop me from turning you in. Ah, que bandido desgraciado eres. <laughs> yeah, and your share will be one bag light, Clayton. Huh? Well, I'll pay you the difference after you get tacked up. <laughs> Amigos, it is not fair to divide it without us. What the hell's the matter with you, Paco? Are you loco? Are you out of your mind? Don't you trust me? 
Don't you trust Montero? No, Jefe. The gold belongs to us. Well, gentlemen? Paco. He tried to steal from Monetero. Partners alone at last.
Not the way to win, Johnny. To hit the mark just takes a little practice, Johnny. Just like everything else. We thank the Lord for the morning. Then we clean the church. Then he can polish her glasses. make sour wine.
think you could teach me how to shoot a gun sometime? Johnny, I don't think I remember very well. Then why do you keep that gun on the drawer? It's not mine. I'm holding it for somebody. It's loose, this gun, isn't it? That's right. I sure wish you could tell me about him. I heard he was one of the best shots around. Maybe. And maybe there was one better. If I ever meet Lewis, I'll have him teach me how to shoot a gun. I don't think you're going to meet him. Down in Mexico somewhere. Is there a chance he's dead? I hardly think so. You want a drink, stranger? <laughs> well, that'll do me for a start. Hi. Hi. They call me Jessie. No kidding. <laughs> you know, Jess, I think I'm going to like this place. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing here? Why the hell ain't you in school? It's my saloon. <laughs> you see, you ask a stupid question and... And you uh, get an answer. Uh. <laughs> Where's your father? 
He's dead. Killed in a gunfight. That's too bad. Wasn't fast enough with his gun, huh? He was too fast. Huh. So they shot him in the back. Oh. Who shot him? I don't know. Happened before I was born. Oh. Johnny! I told you to come here. Wild mare's milkman and mighty fine too. <laughs> I don't think you heard me. I said this is a respectable place. Yes, ma'am, I hear you. I hear you now. This is a respectable place. Oh boy. Not you too. Oh. Nah. We don't need a sheriff, ma'am. We need a preacher. It's a case of self-defense. Everybody saw it was a case of self-defense. Right, fellas? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Sure it was. Somebody go get the sheriff. Johnny! No, Jack. <laughs> now, please, ma'am. I thought you said this was a respectable joint. Crane City, but also in Maverick, Normandy, and Spotford, not to mention Ryden. What can we do, Judge? Go call the sheriff. You coward! Coward! A man has been killed, and all you do is stand around. Isn't there anybody in this town with guts enough to do something about it? A man's been killed, murdered right here in the saloon. I thought we were supposed to have a sheriff in this town. Judge Barrett. Get out of the way. Sheriff, why don't you go after them? Are you going to let them get away with this? You can't let them get away. Jenny, those men are gone. Judge Barrett, something has to be done. This man was killed. He was murdered by the Claytons. The Claytons. They have to be stopped. They have to be arrested. Do you know the Claytons? Listen, Sheriff, I... Jenny, take it easy. I'm glad those people are gone. I don't want any more trouble in this town. 
And going after them would just mean risking the lives of all these people. But they must be punished. Mine is the vengeance, saith the Lord. Take your boy outside. Sheriff, I want to borrow your horse. For what? I got some business to take care of. Father. Now, why don't you stay the hell out of this? The Claytons are a very rough bunch, and I don't want any more of them in this town. Well, I suppose you'd better take this. People listen to me. Anything happens in this town, the responsibility is his. Sorry to destroy your slumber, gentlemen. Well, boys, look who we got here. Local soul, save yourself. And what can we do for you, Father? Spit it out, Father. What the hell do you want? Now, damn it, just them's plain bad manners. Please, please sit down, Father. We're always available for a good confession. Oh, Zeke, pour some coffee for our guest here. I came to return your nephew's property, Clayton. I'm asking you to come back to Juno City with me. The judge is waiting for you. I have the other one, too. I wouldn't try it, if I were you. Yeah, Jess, he's right. That man is right. Don't try it. Now, that voice. That voice rings a bell. Is it possible that we have uh, met before? I don't believe we've had the pleasure. Let's go, young man. I don't want to miss my morning mass. Well, Father, I'm afraid you're just going to have to miss it.
So the holy man don't travel alone. Yes, sir. I think you better go along with him. Oh, yeah. It's all yours, father. Him, I don't understand. He founded this community. This Christian community is a peaceful, law-abiding place. Sheriff, why not call the marshal? Don't take on the responsibility by yourself. Yeah, let's try the telegraph. Better late than not at all. Well, Johnny. And where were you last night? You didn't put out the candles. Go ring the bell, young man. you didn't know how to use a gun. How did you know it was me? Did you put it back? Food slop. It's not fit for the horses. In a few hours, it won't matter. You'll be hanging from a rope. I'll piss on your grave before I hang from a rope. You tell that to your sheriff, huh? <laughs> Don't. I want to watch the jerk hang. Try that again, and I'll cut you in two. Get it? <laughs> I'll keep the key safe till the morning. You check later with the sheriff. Listen, I 
told the judge I was going to piss on his grave, and I'm a man of my word. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's get the priest first. Why not get them both, huh? Come on. Hold it, hold it. Stands as wait till sunrise, we wait. Come on. Uh, go back to sleep, huh? Beautiful morning. Mom said you did a great job the other night. With God's help. And yours too, Johnny. If I ever meet Lewis, I'll have him teach me how to shoot a gun. I don't think you're gonna meet him. Down in Mexico somewhere.
Hi, honey. Hey. Take a look what's happening now, huh? Things is taking a change for the better. The judge is on our side. From now on, I'm the law in Juno City. Judge Barrett, Judge Clayton killed a man in my saloon, and now Father John's dead, too. Oh, now listen, sweetheart. Now, we came for Jess because he is innocent. Now, everybody knows it was a case of self-defense. <laughs> now, ain't that right, Judge? Ain't that right, Judge? <laughs> well, what about the priest, huh? Who killed him? Have you forgotten about him already? What the hell was that? You don't mean to tell me there are horse thieves in this town? Horse thieves? Yeah, horse thieves. Sam! That little blonde kid. He just took two of our horses. Johnny! Let me go! Johnny! Johnny! You know, that's how I got started, too. Yes, yeah, stealing horses? Yeah, stealing horses. <laughs> <laughs> go on, go get him. A little bastard. Sheriff! Sheriff! Let me go! Somebody has to call the marshal and come, sir. Do you hear me? Oh, now listen, honey. That telegraph is broken. Is that right, Sheriff? <laughs> you bastard. Me? <laughs> come on. Found one horse. Rip's still out there looking for the kid. 
Where is he? I want to go. Now, shut Let up, will you? Yeah, get her out of here. <coughs> Unless we can get that kid, he can cause us a lot of trouble. Mike's right. Let's divvy up and pull out. Well, that's fine with me. I don't care what the hell you do, Zeke. Give him a share. The rest of it stays in the family. Zeke? Now, look. We got those plans to stay here and wait for that stagecoach to Stockton, and we are going to stick to our plans. $50,000, a chest full of gold. This here will do me just fine. Yeah, and the stagecoach is all yours, too. Now, you heard what the man said. That boy could cause a lot of trouble. I better take a look, huh? Oh, uh, what's happening with our sheriff? Oh, he's been well taken care of. Uh, <laughs> got himself a good caretaker, huh? <laughs> You go south, muchacho. You don't find anything till you come to Iglesia Destruida in one mile. Then nothing for two more miles till Pueblo Guerado, where the Americano Luis is living. Hey, muchacho, you are loco to run in the trip. Oh, está loco. They're beautiful. Who are they? The sheriff's daughters? No, they're not his. Mine. He's their uncle. How could such an ugly SOB have two pretty daughters like that, huh? I love them. Please, don't do any harm to them. Harm? You must be kidding, old timer. You know something? I love him as well. And I'm going to tell you just how much. Them too. <laughs> <laughs>
are you looking for? Hey, what's wrong? My name is Juanita. Who are you? What is it? Why don't you talk? You have a dry throat. Come, sit down. Want to? You don't want to talk, or you can't. My father is coming. Maybe he can get you to say something. seen a ghost. <laughs> you could use a meal, a bath, and a bed. A bath first, come on. I think I'll be heading on back. We'll cross the frontier in the morning. So we'll camp here for the night. Yeah. Well, enjoy your money. And don't spend it all in one place. <laughs> all right, Sam. <laughs> It'll last a long time. I think I'll take a look up there. See you around. So long, Sam. So long. Thanks so long. for everything. I'll be crippled all my life, but I'll be rich. What the hell happened? <laughs> I got duped by that goddamn kid, but now it's your turn. Well, if you're crippled, you'll never make it alone. You'll rot here. I can help you. Oh, no. Here. Here's your money. I don't trust you anymore. You don't trust me? Look, I only got two shells in my gun. Here. Now it's empty. Now you can trust me. Why are you gonna shoot me? Well, if you want to shoot me, go ahead. Shoot me in the legs. Go ahead, right here. Shoot me, then we'll be even. No, 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 wait. No, I... <laughs> I don't understand. You still don't talk. <laughs> 
Is something bothering you? Or maybe it's a secret. Something you don't want to say in front of my daughter? Well, don't worry. I don't have any secrets from Juanita. You know, kid, I can go along with a man who doesn't run off at the mouth too much, but, uh... At least you could tell me your name. My brother sent you? Must have had a lot of faith in you to trust you with this. What's wrong, Johnny? Don't you feel good? In front of the church. Uh, four bullets or four men? Who did it, Johnny? Isn't there a sheriff in Juno City? When did it happen? Two. Two days? Father, listen. Listen, you're not thinking of going there, are you? But he's dead. And well, there's nothing anybody can do. Your going there won't help. You might end up dead, too. And well, I know you wouldn't have wanted that. I have to go. <gasps> Try and understand, Juanita. I've got to live with myself. I've got to go.
You were born with that? Oh, happened when my brother, uh... Kids, our father taught us how to shoot. The position of the sun, the direction of the wind, dance. A hundred or more times a day we'd practice, in and out of the holster. John practiced so much he wore out dozens of holsters. <laughs> Nobody could beat John to the draw. Then one day, God put a Bible in his hands instead of a gun. My story? It's a bit different. It happened in a gambling house in Abilene. That was my other life a long time ago. Self-defense, Sheriff. Self-defense. Lewis caught him cheating at the aces up his sleeve. Wherever you are, it seems there is always trouble. Jed has some mean friends in this town. I think it's high time you left. dust you off, there won't be one person in this town to put flowers on your grave. So we thought we'd bring you some, just in case. Sir, I'm, my name is Mortimer, and I want to thank you, sir. I'm really indebted to you. You see, well, what I mean is, I bet all my savings on you. And thanks to you, sir, I'm a very rich man now. An amazingly rich man. <laughs> and all because of you. Uh, I want to thank you, sir. Go get your hat, mister. And 
don't forget your gun. There are a lot of bad people around here. <laughs> you decide whether a man is innocent or not in a fifth of a second. What are you trying to say? It's time you stopped. Stop and do what? Hang up my gun, I'm dead in an hour. Leave. Leave. What do you mean? Leave and go where? Where you can start a new life. The only life I know is this. Listen to my brother, and my life has been different. But now I must do what I feel is right. It's a bunch of men on horses coming this way. Posse. Where? About two miles out. I'm getting out of here. Sam said stay put. I ain't gonna swing from no rope. Hey, you ain't gonna swing. You haven't got a head on your shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, that's Martha Clayton. Hey, Jed. See, remember that place? Dryden? Dryden? Dryden. <laughs> You mean the judge's daughters, huh? <laughs> So the sheriff didn't telegraph the marshal, eh? You know, you're a liar, Judge, a double-crossing liar. Sure. Sure. Now go out there and get rid of them. If you want me to treat your daughter like a gentleman. Marshal, it's me, Judge Barrett. Hand over Jess Clayton, Judge. When the sheriff saw you weren't coming, he decided not to keep him here. He took him to Fort Stockton. Damn it, you hear that? After three days' ride, we find they've handed him over to the army. Let's go after him anyway. I want to hang him myself. Here. 
you're a very smart man. Clayton always keeps his word. I think I'm gonna get her sister. Yeah, it's high time we all had some fun. Come on, let's go to the saloon. Yeah, let's go, come on. Come on, yeah. Good idea. No, no, no. Animals, animals, animals. Oh, 
That's a goddamn crazy woman we got here. I ain't got no son. Everybody knows I ain't got no son. Go on, Jeff, have your fun. It's the truth, Sam Payton. Yeah, yeah, sure it's the truth. <laughs> hey, you really are a crazy woman. Your son. What the hell are you talking about? What is this mother of my son story? What the hell are you talking about? Get out of here, God damn it! Who are you? Don't you remember? A long time ago, in Dryden. What the hell is Dryden? Yes. Johnny, I mean, uh, why not? I, why not? Johnny boy. I got a son! I got a son! Hey, Curly, Curly, Zeke, Zeke, I got a son. I got a, I got a, I got a, I got a son. I got a son of a gun like me. You know, I'm beginning to like him already. <laughs> He's got guts. Pull the fast one on his old man out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I gotta find him. I gotta find Johnny. I gotta find my son. Time to spread God's word. And I won't need that. the way you helped my brother. Uh, 
Come on, get out of here, all of you. Come on, out! Out! Get out! Hey, Frank! Go get the money! What about the stagecoach? I said go get the money! Johnny! I know you're out there someplace. Now, come on! It's me, it's your pop! No! Don't say that! Don't let Johnny know you're his father! He's the only thing I have! I tried to raise him to be a good boy, and if he finds out, it'll destroy him! Shut up! Johnny's my son. He's my son, and he takes care of me. Alone out there in the desert, he fooled three of my best men, almost killed one of them. Oh, he's a Clayton, all right. He's got my blood in his veins. He's the only good thing I got in my rotten life. Sam, please, I beg of you, don't take him away from me. Ah, uh, shut up. because he was drunk. See, get the money. He's not there! Fred, you go see what's happening. You too, Jess.
think you're doing? I told you I didn't need that. Get up on a horse. See, let's go, come on. girls, I think it's all over. Take a drink. gonna hang you at the end of a rope. Move your ass. Move it! Hey, old buddy, not too far from the border now. Hey, B. 
Brother George, why the heck are we going to Mexico? Why? Well, Willie, because back there, there's nothing but death and destruction. And in Mexico, there's gold, silver, and those lovely brown skin girls. Sure glad I asked. There, Johnny. You know what those crosses are? This is an old abandoned mission. That's a cemetery. I, I got a surprise for you. Come on. You know, Johnny. Some people are born poor as church mice. And others are, others are rolling in money. There. Now look here. Look what we got. We got $50,000, Johnny. All ours, kid. Yeah. $50,000 all in one pile. Bet you never seen so much money, have you? We're gonna enjoy the rest of our lives together, Johnny. Look, it's all ours. You know, Johnny, out there is, is Mexico. I always want to go there someday. To Mexico, maybe, maybe somewhere down near the sea. Yeah. But I always kept putting it off, and you know why? Yeah, I'll tell you why, Johnny. I'll tell you why. It was because, because of my nephews. Zeke, and Jess, and then Red, none of them. They wouldn't agree. And listen, I'll tell you something. I ain't getting no younger. Time just goes by, and then... And then one day, one day you just get older and suddenly you find yourself all alone. You deserve to be alone. You shut up. You shut up. She don't know nothing, Johnny. She don't understand. Clayton! Father John was my brother.
Mine is the vengeance, saith the Lord. Oh, here, here, look, it's yours, here, here, it's all yours, all $50,000. It's yours. It's all yours. You understand? Fifty thousand dollars. I got some more in this bag here. No! You take care of that, Johnny.
Attorney Parsons, having been found guilty by a jury of your peers. I didn't see any jury. Well, they was around. Anyway, what difference does it make? You gunned down Wendy Jones, and he was one of our most beloved and respected citizens. I heard he was the town drunk. Well, now that he's dead, he's one of our most beloved and respected citizens. I don't care who he was, I didn't kill him. You've got the right to hear a few words from a preacher. Unfortunately, our preacher's out of town, but luckily, we got Farley Millard here, and he's a feed and grain salesman, and he owns a Bible. No, thanks. Now, what does that mean? I don't want any feed and grain salesman praying over me. I don't want anyone praying over me. I don't believe in that stuff. You ready, Max? Oh. You got one more inalienable right to speak a few last words, and I mean a few. <laughs> We don't want one of them things where the camp takes off with a declaration of independence. <laughs> well, go on. Well, I'd just like to say that this is the lousiest town that I've ever been in. Well, I've met a better class folk in a San Francisco opium parlor. Drunken pool hall bum would be considered too high tone for these parts. And as for your system of justice, well... That's enough! You see what I mean? He was just one breath away from the Declaration. All right, Max. Don't do it! Don't do it! Don't do it! Don't do it! Ed Loose just confessed. He killed Wendy in a drunken barroom brawl about a pregnant Indian squaw. Ed claims Wendy was the father and that he was acting as the avenging angel. Wendy was going to be the father or something? That's what Ed says. All right. Untime. Giving his gun. Now, that's the way out of town, son. Take it, keep on going, and don't you never come back. You heard her. I'm not guilty. Even so, we don't want no fast guns in this town. Fast guns right alongside with lepers in this law-abiding community. Can I ride back to town long enough to get some food? That's the way out, son. Don't press your luck. Thanks. Bye. I'm going with you. You don't have to. I'll be back. When? Whatever you do, don't leave town. Wait. Never give up hope. See ya. If I'd have known he was going to act like that, I never would have lied for him. Lied? What? You would have never what? I don't care. I thought he was cute. There ain't a man around here I'd have as a gift. And he took a bath every so often besides. After him! Oh. Oh.
Easy, boy. Reverend Frank Fleming. Yeah, pleased to know you, Frank. Dear Reverend, everybody in Castle Walk is real excited about you coming here. We ain't had a preacher here in over three years. When our last one left in such a hurry, he didn't even say goodbye. He was a pious man, but he had a yellow streak down his back. We're all looking forward to meeting you for the first time. All looking forward to meeting you for the first time? Hmm. I don't know how long you'll be willing to stay, but you'll be welcome every minute of it. You the preacher's horse? <laughs> Let's see what you got, pal. Frank, if ever I catch the guy who did you in, I'll take care of him for you. In the meantime, I'm gonna need your clothes and your horse. I got a posse after me for something I didn't do. I'll say a prayer for you, Frank, but coming from me, I'm afraid it's liable to do you more harm than good. Percy? Uh, sorry about that there, Parson, but uh, we live a little too far off to catch that there caller. Is there anything we can do for you, Reverend? Either of you boys ever heard of a town called Castle Walk? Why, yeah, it's in Arizona. Sure ain't much of a town, though. How far is it from here? Oh, about 150 miles. It's over yonder in that direction. How's your church attendance been lately, boys? <laughs> you boys see that branch over there? Uh, yes, sir. That was four for the Lord, boys. He loves you, but he hates your profession. Yeah, I can see how he would. I want you boys to go and sin no more. Uh, we surely won't, Parson. Uh, as soon as we can afford not to. Uh, preacher, 
You being so good with that gun and all, uh, how come you didn't just kill us as we was riding up here? Because you boys are children of the Lord, just as much as I am. Children of the Lord, huh? <laughs> Sorry, Sadie. Didn't have the time to dig it no deeper. Well, I guess we better just put him in the ground and get it over with. All right. Without even a few words? Mr. Ross didn't say nothing about no words. Said we could have a burying. Mr. Ross didn't say nothing about no words. Christian man, you can't just bury him like a wild dog. Can't we stand up to Mr. Ross just this once? You're leaving here after the burial. We gotta stay here and live with him. All right, let's get going. Wait a minute. Is it one of Mr. Ross men? Looks like a preacher. Well, what do we do now? I wrote him myself not to come. Thank God you're here, Reverend. I've got many receptions in my life, ma'am. Yours is almost unique. We were going to have to bury my husband without any proper words being said. But now that you're here... You, the Reverend Frank Fleming? That's right. I wrote your letter telling you not to come. No, you wrote me a letter welcoming me to Castle Walk. I wrote you that letter. Uh, yeah, but things changed. First, Mr. Ross said it was all right for us to have a preacher, and then Mr. Ross changed his mind. Gentlemen, what the hell is going on here? Reverend! Did you see? the word that came straight from the Bible, folks. Now, all I know is we've got a heartbroken little widow here. You did say you were the widow? And these are my children. That's a child. She's 18. Oh, she certainly is. Well, first order of business as I see it is to get this poor man put decently into the ground. Oh, thank you, Reverend. Oh, I, I don't know what Mr. Ross is going to say about this. I haven't been here five minutes, and I'm already sick to death of Mr. Ross. Come on, let's bow our heads. Don't you have a Bible, Reverend? Oh, I probably do in my saddlebag. Here, you can borrow mine, Reverend. The deceased was probably a simple man, so I'll just say a few simple words of my own, not bother to dip into the Bible today. As you all know, it's ashes to ashes and dust to dust, which may not sound like the best deal in the world, but it's the only deal you're ever going to get, so you might as well learn to live with it. I didn't know the late deceased, but some of the works he left behind are mighty impressive. Well, what did he die of? He was shot in the back. May the full wrath of the Lord fall on people who shoot other people in the back. It's a rotten, sinful way to make a living. Amen. 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 Can't thank you enough, Reverend. 
<laughs> I'd like to say more, but Mr. Ross only gave us half an hour to get out of town after the funeral. You're leaving town? You taking her with you? Mr. Ross said we all had to go. Who is this Mr. Ross? He's a mean, miserable, murdering thief, and he runs everybody in this part of the country. There ain't a soul of us that had a single, solitary, happy day since he rode in here and took over. He's gonna hear every word that you said. Yeah, and he'll probably kill me. But at least I got to say something that should have been said before I died. Why is he running this woman out of town? My husband's plan was the only man in these parts to stand up to Mr. Ross. So he had Sam killed. He let us take one wagon load of our things. We'd better get started. Ma'am, the only place you're going is back to your ranch. I'm sure with the help of all these fine citizens that we can make Mr. Ross see the error of his ways. Reverend, you don't understand the situation around here. Mr. Ross is a powerful, powerful man. He's got money and influence. And he's got 20 top gunfighters working for him. Before I tell you people what I really think of you, I'm going to tell you something about gunfighters. Now, Ross doesn't have 20 top gunfighters working for him because there ain't 20 top gunfighters in the whole U.S. of A. Now, what Ross probably does have is about 15 cowboys that wear guns for ornaments. They do just fine at shooting up a saloon or making some terrified dude dance a little jig. Ross has probably got about three men who are pretty good at getting their guns out of their holsters, but no good at hitting anything once they do. Which leaves about two or three men that might honestly be called gunfighters. Not top gunfighters. More like second or third raiders. So you see, you folks have been letting yourselves be rousted around by a bunch of two-bit yahoos. How come you know so much about gunfighters, Reverend? The Lord's work takes one to many places in many climes. Matthew 31. There ain't no Matthew 31. Well, there ought to be. Widow, I want you and your family to get in the wagon. I'm going to drive you home. You're going to sit next to me. Oh, I don't know, Reverend. Ma'am, you don't look like the kind of woman that would back away from a little fight. Where's your faith? My faith is in good shape, Reverend. And if you're willing to take the risk, so are we. Get in the wagon, kids. Us and the Reverend are going home. <laughs> The lives of this family will be on your soul, Reverend. Oh, Reverend? Yeah. A couple of Ross's men are in town, and they're pretty liquored up. That was their first mistake. You ride my horse, son. Okay. Those are just two of the cowboys, ma'am. Who? Where do you people think you're going? Where's the place that Ross would least like us to go? I'd say her ranch. Well, that's exactly where we're going. Well, Mr. Ross hears about this. Mr. Ross is a skunk of doubtful parentage. Mr. Ross is so low he could walk under a rattlesnake's belly wearing a high hat. And that's what I think of Mr. Ross without ever having met the man. Now, that was indecisive, cowboy. Could have very easily cost you your own important life. Those could have just as easily been your ears flying off your heads, boys. Well, that's a terrible way for a preacher to act. Lord, 
wants someone to move, he wants them to move. Don't talk about hell to a sinner, ma'am. <laughs> you a sinner? Yeah, we're all sinners. We're about to be. All right, kids, as soon as we stop, I want you to get the wagon unloaded. I want to get this family settled in before dark. You don't mind if I order your kids around a little, do you, ma'am? Reverend, you can do anything you want to. Reverend? Reverend? Oh, yes, ma'am. Reverend, this hole in the back of your coat, it looks like a bullet hole. <clears throat> well, that'd be my guess, ma'am. You guessed? How could a man be shot in the back and not know it? Well, I was carrying that coat over my arm when the shooting took place. <clears throat> well, tobacco's one of the Lord's works, too, ma'am. I'll get my things and fix your coat. Do you think Mr. Ross and his men are gonna come down and get us tonight? No, not tonight, honey. I'd imagine that Sunday in church would be where he makes his first play. Aren't you scared at all? Well, I'm scared, all right, Sally. But not the kind of scare that make me knuckle under to the likes of that Ross. Thought of a text for your sermon tomorrow, Reverend? Tomorrow? Tomorrow's Sunday. I've lost all track of time the last few weeks. <laughs> what do you think I ought to preach about? I thought you said the sin of cowardice. Yeah, that's not bad either. Thought you probably had some favorite passage from the Bible to illustrate your point. Oh, I do. Several of them, as a matter of fact. But what's your favorite passage from the Bible that would illustrate that point, ma'am? I think it would be Luke 12. Christ says, do you think I have come to give peace on earth? I came to cast fire upon the earth, and would it were already kindled. It says that in the Bible? Well, I told you, Luke 12. Oh, Luke 12. <laughs> yeah, that Luke, he really knew how to turn a phrase, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Clean your clothes up for the services. Well, I'd appreciate that. You don't happen to have a Bible around, do you? I, uh, seem to, uh... Misplaced my glasses. Did you turn to that spot, Luke, that your mother was talking about? It's right here. You don't wear glasses. No, something, you're right. I don't know what got into me. Well, good night. from uh, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 34. Although Luke says pretty much the same thing in his 12. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Now, I don't know what that means to you, but I know what it means to me. It means that while God loves peace, when the occasion arises, He's not reluctant to use the sword. Matter of fact, when the occasion calls for it, he might become downright irritated if you don't use the sword, or the gun, or the rope. 
Now, whatever's handy. Now, you folks have had a cross to bear here lately, and his name is Ross. They say that people get the kind of lives they deserve, and I guess they do. But when men won't fight for their wives, women, and children, and when their women won't make them fight for what's right, then these people don't deserve any kind of lives at all. That's exactly what you've got. Get his gun. Never done it. I don't think you could possibly realize what an awful thing it is to kill a man. I don't know who God must be mad at the most. That man for wasting his life at the order of some tin horn dictator. Me for having to do this thing in his own house. You people haven't quit before the fight even got started. I haven't got the heart for any more church today, that's all. Mr. Ross, a couple of these men are outside. Take care of yourself, son. Every second. Bring that body outside. You've had a couple of fun days here, preacher. Well, I tell you, Ross, you... The name is Mr. Ross. The name was Mr. Ross. Now, you hear me good, Ross. Either of those two men go for their guns, I'm going to go for you first. I think I can take him, Mr. Ross. Don't think. Here's your chance, boys. Either you holding any grudges against him, draw on me, and I'll kill him for you. If we go together, we can get him. Before or after he kills me. You don't look all that fast to me. Shut up. <laughs> Friend of yours, Ross? All right, preacher. You pulled yourself off a nice little grandstand play for the folks. Now I want you out of town. Who killed Sam Underwood? You were one of your men. I'm going to find out if I have to take the whole bunch of you to pieces. Give me the word. I'm sure I can beat him. Well, go on back to the ranch. I'll be there in a minute. You sure? Now. That's the way I like it. Man to man. Do I make the first player to you? I just changed my mind, preacher. I don't want you out of town. I want you right here where I can get you any time I want you. Service is next Sunday at 10 o'clock, and there's a four-bit fine for being late. <laughs> You wouldn't shoot me in the back, would you, preacher? Like that. <laughs> Any of you folks think your preacher doesn't deserve a drink after the events of this morning? Well, we just don't believe in the same God, that's all. Some of you boys plan him, will you? Don't you feel a little strange having a drink with your preacher on a Sunday morning? No. How come? You know, about 10 or 12 years ago, I took a trip up to Cheyenne. Come across this altercation between a 
19-year-old kid, and one of the top gunslingers in that part of the country at that time. This kid, he didn't want no part of the fight, but this gun, he was drunk, and he kept at it. And finally, the kid had to go for his gun or get blasted right there in his tracks. It was plum pitiful. How? This kid was the fastest thing I ever seen. Caught that gun, he flat foot. Why, he was dead before God got the news. I inquired around, found out this kid's name was Ernie Parson. Ernie, what are you doing here in Castle Walk, dressed up in that preacher's outfit? It's a wrong guess, Billy. You know, once you've seen a top man handle himself in a gunfight, you never forget one little detail. What do you want for, anyway? Doesn't matter. I didn't do it. They'll hang me just like I did if they catch me. Did you kill Frank Clement? Oh, of course not. Came across his body in the hills, and he was already dead. I was half starved, no place to go, so I took his clothes and horse and came here. All right. All right. I'll ride back to the ranch, tell the widow and the kids goodbye, and then I'll move on. Well, I leave. You're the answer to our prayers, Ernie. No, I'm not, Billy. Don't let these clothes fool you. God moves in mysterious ways, boy. Not that mysterious. Look, Billy, what I'd like to know is if I do stick around here, how much help can I count on from these God-fearing people? Almost none. Almost none? Uh, none. God moving in his mysterious way to get me killed. God will smite the sinners of Castle Walk just as surely as he smote the Philistines. Smote. For the time is at hand when you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Be not afraid, for this must first take place. Nations will rise against nations. Kingdoms against kingdoms. Not a head on your hair, or a hair on your head. Will perish. And I quote Luke chapter 21, verse. Luke chapter 21 and verse 23. For there shall be great distress in the land, wrath upon his people. I brought you some lunch. I didn't know preachers had to practice. Well, it's either that or watch the collections fall off. Huh? Oh, that's that's a real bad joke I stole from the Methodist. Oh. <laughs> Did your mother know you came out here alone? I don't know. Why? Well, uh, you're a very attractive young girl. Almost too young, as a matter of fact. Most of the girls around here are married by the time they're 13 or 14. Thirteen, huh? Well, I'll have to look into that. Why? They're the lucky ones. Even if they don't get a trip to Phoenix out of it. Is that the price of marriage around here, a trip to Phoenix? No, but it sure doesn't hurt. Look, do I have to keep on calling you Reverend? Oh, no. Call me Ernie. Ernie? My full name's uh, Frank Ernest Fleming. All my good friends, they call me Ernie. <laughs> Is there anything in your faith against marriage? No, not in my faith. Look, Sally, uh, sit down. This conversation isn't going in exactly the direction I planned. I mean, you know, marriage is just fine. I was real glad that my parents believed in it. But, uh, well, there's other things, too. You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? I know what you're talking about. What's the matter? Oh, it's these clothes and this collar. It's just, I'm not going to get anywhere dressed like this. I don't see that it makes much difference. Uh, you would if you were dressed like a nun. It's just the wrong outfit for what I had in mind. Hey, preacher! I've got to talk to you! Hi, Sal! Hi. It's real important. Do 
You know a gunfighter named Jake McCoy? Yeah, I know of him. He's in town. My blessing's on him. And he's working for Ross. Is he really good? Yeah, he's the best. You can take him, can't you? You sure he's working for Ross? Yeah, and he's looking for you. Although he don't know who you really are. That doesn't matter. Or does it? Where's he at now? Well, he's at the Bent Saloon when I left town. You're gonna have to ride back to the ranch alone. We didn't get very much accomplished today, did we? Can't you just feel the ice breaking all around us? Parsons anymore? <clears throat> I've never run into Ernie Parsons. Any time, any place at all, ever. You have now. Church? In the hiding for the winter. Oh. I always heard you were kind of smart. I never heard that about you. Look, are we really going to have to go through with this thing? I got a thousand dollars in my pocket. And the girl waiting for me in Boulder City says, I got to go through with it. You all that sure you can beat me? You all that sure I can't? The only thing I hate is a stupid, senseless fight. Come on. Flip a coin. When it hits the ground, we go for our guns, all right? All right. Jake? One of us is going to die, and it's not going to prove a thing. Sure it is, Ernie. It's going to prove which one of us is a fool to call himself a gunfighter. <laughs> Are 
Were you hit? You? Did you ever miss from this distance before? Never. Neither. Want to try again? No. No, I think somebody's trying to tell us something. You put your gun away. I'm gonna get on my horse and get out of this place. I beat you, you know that, don't you? Oh, no, you didn't, and you know dang well you did, Jake. You gonna give Ross his thousand dollars back? No, I'm late for my date. Folks, see those bullets hit? I don't think it hit anywhere, River. That's just plain silly. Cold copper. That's how those stupid legends get started. Jake and I have an off day in a gunfight. Miss each other. Wish there could be a thousand explanations. Just because a bunch of rummies standing around don't see where the bullets hit, all of a sudden you've got the miracle of Castle Wall. Now this whole miserable little town's gonna think that God's on their side. Well, you got me convinced, huh? But somehow or other, you just hardly believe that you convince yourself. Now, let me point out a couple of things to you. Like what? Well, for instance, you're back yonder in that town and they're about to hang you. And right at the last minute, in rides this gal and saves your neck. She and I have been fooling around a little bit. All right. Well, then you're out there in the brush. Posses are chasing you. Then all of a sudden, you come across this here preacher's body. You find this letter that brings you right here to this here town. It's supposed to lead him. Yeah, but you was the one that wound up here. Right here, where you're needed more than anybody's ever been needed before. Now, do all this make you want to stop and think just a little bit, boy? No. I don't want to talk about it. You should have listened to me when I told you to get out of town. You should have backed out in front of me the other morning, either. Now, this whole town's gonna have the idea that you're just a little less than the tin gods you pretended to be. Just tell me one thing. What really happened between you and Jake McCoy? I chased that bum out of town. And he's not gonna give you your thousand dollars back, either. He said to tell you that's the price he charges for shaking hands of scum like you. Get on with it. Prayer man, you drop that rope real slow. Drop it. <laughs> you ain't getting out of town fast enough, preacher.
the bunkhouse of our ranch. I thought it would scare the kids if they saw you like this. Why'd you find me? When you didn't come home last night, I set out to look for you. You stripped me down? I'm a ranch girl with brothers. Don't make a big thing out of it. You're something brand new in my life, Sally. Are you strong enough to get up and get dressed and get out of here? Doesn't matter whether I am or not, I've got to do it. You turn your back, Sal. I'm not as advanced in my thinking as you are. Will I ever see you again? Sure, why not? I'm not going far. We well, have to. When they don't get your body, Mr. Ross will never stop until they find you. Yeah, and this is the first place he'll look. I want you and the kids to go out and dig a grave. Put some kind of a marker on it with my name. Tell Ross you found my body and buried it in the hills. Can I turn around now? Sure. Sally, I don't want anyone to know that I'm alive. I want it to come as a horrible shock to Ross. I'm going to start giving him trouble in ways he never dreamed of. I'm going to need plenty of food, water, and ammunition. I'll get you everything you need. Where will you go? I'll hide out in the hills for a while. Well, Ernie, in this part of the country, if a girl undresses a man, it's customary for the man to make an honest woman out of her. I'm sure that's true in every part of the country. If I live through the next little while, we'll, we'll have a serious talk about that. What's the matter? Well, well, just look at the way I look. Well, it's always something, isn't it? You don't like the way you're dressed. You don't like the way you look. <laughs> There's a bunch of outlaws operating up in these hills. Probably scared old Chet and Harley half to death. Blew up the well, too. There at all. What do you mean? Dragging a preacher through the cactus. Them people don't have to stay dead unless they want to. Everybody in town keeps talking about the preacher's ghost to riding through the hills and shooting at every one of Ross's men that sticks his head up. I keep telling them to hold dog on my idea. Go stick it. 
Sally. Didn't you tell Billy? He told me not to tell anyone. Billy, I'm sorry. It's sure good to see you alive, boy. Are you sure it's safe for you down here? Honey, it's been a long time since I've been safe anywhere. Lately, it's been getting worse. Isn't tomorrow Sunday? It sure is. Billy, I want you to ride into town and tell everyone that we're having church services tomorrow morning at 10. I'll do it right now. Sally told you our plans, ma'am? Yes. You have any objections? No. Ma'am, uh, has it occurred to you that well, Sally's liable to end up one of the youngest widows in these parts. Uh-uh. Mary Mert's only 14. She's been a widow two years. Besides Mary Mert? No, Grace Dorothy only been married a week and a half when her husband fell down a mine shaft. You know how old she is. <laughs> Sally, uh, could we take a walk outside? Yeah. Excuse us, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Sally, uh, the reason I brought you out here is well, one of the reasons. If we're going to be husband and wife, then you've got a right to be in on the decisions that affect the both of us. You understand? Now, if I stay here and fight it out with Ross and his men, the chances are very good that I'll be killed. But on the other hand, we could leave here tonight, get married the very first time we come to, go someplace we both like and settle down and just have a wonderful life for ourselves. It's all up to you, Sally. You just say the word. Well, Mom always said never throw yourself in between a man and what he thinks he's got to do. Well, I won't kid you, Sally. I'm a little disappointed in that answer. Oh. No, no it's, it's all right. I got the strangest feeling that I've been pointed straight toward this shootout ever since the day I was born. There wasn't a thing in the world I could do about it. Billy says it's God moving in his mysterious way. Me? Well, I just don't know. You very religious, Sally? Why do men have to talk and talk? Can't you be quiet and get on with what you're supposed to be doing? Yes, ma'am. Folks, I'm here today as your preacher and as God's representative. As your preacher, I've stood up to your enemies for you. And all that's gotten me so far is a lot of bruises and a bunch of cactus spines. Now, I understand that a lot of you thought I was dead. And that my ghost was raging through the hills, wreaking my vengeance on Ross and his men. And I want to ask you something. What were your feelings? Were you scared that you might have an angry ghost raging in your hills? Or were you ashamed because not a single one of you came out to see if I was alive or if I might not need some help? Well, I'm warning you people. While you're sitting around waiting for God and me to do your work for you, God just might have some plans of his own. Maybe he's not as angry at Ross as he is at you. I'm not armed. Billy, go outside. Take a look around. I came along. Go on, Billy. I just thought it was time that all this foolishness came to an end. We got a new country to build here. We ought to be getting on with it. Instead of indulging in all this senseless killing. I won't deny that you've hurt me since you've been here. Several of my men have been killed or wounded. Several more have run off because you scared them half to death. I didn't know I was doing that well. What do you want, Ross? A truce. A chance to get on with our lives. Ross, if you were sitting on a stack of Bibles ten feet high, I'd bet money that you were lying and I'd win. Well, now, just a minute, Reverend. If Mr. Ross is sincere, and I believe he is, 
This may be just the moment we've been waiting for. Luther, how could you believe that? I don't believe him for a minute. Now, Sadie. You are going to believe this man after all he's done to you? Well, Gee, host of bad reverend. Anybody can make a mistake. Oh. If Mr. Ross is man enough to come here... Please, to come please, here. please. I didn't mean to create any dissension amongst the preacher's flock. Now, you've all heard what I have to say. Think it over. Well, I think we ought to accept the proposition. Well, I think you're right. <laughs> I have an announcement to make. Miss Sally Underwood and I are going to be married tomorrow morning at 11. You're all invited. I don't know. Second the ceremony is over, my wife and I will be leaving this godforsaken town for good. The ceremony won't take place here in the church. It'll be at the Mint Saloon. You can say what you want about those people at the Mint. But they know why they're there and they do something about it. feelings and I'm never wrong that I should get out of this place. When do you say that? Huh? Oh, nothing. Hey, yonder she comes now. Oh, oh you're beautiful. Come on, everybody. Uh, don't you get the feeling that maybe something's missing here? I mean, who's going to perform the ceremony? You're the only preacher around here. Well, I don't know of any law that says I can't delegate my otherworldly powers. You marry us, Billy. Oh, yes, Billy. Well, I don't know about the legality of all this. Oh, never mind the legality. It's the spirit that counts. Well, now, I take Sally to be my wedded wife. You go on from there. Well, dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to unite this couple of holy... Reverend, you are right. Ross and his men have bypassed the town, and they're circling around, and they're coming in that way. Well, he's let us down again. Hold it down, hold it down. How many men? I uh, counted uh, 14, including Ross. How long before they get here? Not more than five minutes. Well, five minutes is plenty of time. Go on with what you're saying, Billy. I'll have to get ready for Ross, otherwise I won't stand a chance. We'll have to finish this thing later. All right, folks, this is it. Now you see how much his word means. Ross and his men are coming into town for just one reason, to get me. Because he knows if he kills me, there won't be enough fight left in the rest of you to hold off a bunch of sick old ladies. This thing works two ways. Now, if I can get Ross first, then his men won't have any reason to go on with the fight. So all I'll need is some of you to keep his men pinned down while I take care of Ross. But the women and the children... You don't even have to come out in the open. You can shoot from the windows or from the roofs. You don't even have to hit anything. Just shoot fast and make a lot of noise, but keep his men pinned down. Well, you said we didn't have to hit anything, just make a lot of noise. I just don't think I'd take a chance with you, do you? Come on, Billy. Give me the keys to the hardware store. Barbershop. Now, I don't hate you people. I guess you just can't help the way you are. Well, I ain't gonna be that easy on you. Ernie, there's something else that you ought to know about. I'd have told you sooner, but... Well, I didn't want to spoil the wedding. 
Kind of like the sheriff that wanted to hang you. He's here in town. Where? Over at my place. I told him I was the sheriff here. It's one that I got off our last late sheriff. Anyhow, I told him if he'd wait there while I'd round you up and bring you into him. How'd he find me? Oh, him and that posse come across Frank Fleming's body. One of them old boys knew Frank. They figured that you'd switch clothes with him before. Well, if he wants me, he's just gonna have to get in line behind Ross and those other 13 men. You take the barbershop. Ernie, when this thing's over with, though, you gotta get out of town. That's all there is to it. Billy, what the hell makes you think we're gonna live through this thing? You all right? Barely. Listen, all you Ross's men. Ross is dead. Anyone who keeps on fighting is going to have to stand trial. How do we know he's dead? Because I'm alive. <laughs> all right. You heard the man. Sheriff's 
go be down here to find out what this is all about. Yeah, I know. Billy, get my horse and meet me out back, huh? Go over to the Mint Saloon and tell Sally to meet me back at the ranch. We'll take off from there. No, I ain't going to do it. I'm a dang fool for going along with this thing as far as I have. I ain't going to go no further. What are you talking about? I ain't going to let you run away with that kid. Her not knowing who you are or what you are or what kind of a life she's letting herself in for. You think if I told her everything, she still wouldn't ride away with me? Well, of course she would, Ernie. Because she's 18 and, and you're her first love. Well, that's good enough for me. Ernie, when that sheriff finds out you've left town, do you suppose that he's just going to give up? I can take care of him. Yeah, you can take care of him with one hand, while you take care of Sally with the other. You know, if something goes wrong, why, she can just stand around with your baby in her and watch you hang. You think I could just ride off without telling her why? I'll tell her. Yeah, then what happens to her? Oh. She'll be tore up for a while, but, but she's young. She'll get over it in a month or two. Yeah, but I won't get over it in a month or two. I'll get your horse. I'll get it myself. Ernie? This town owes you a whole lot. But it don't owe you a can't make any promises. Blessings on you, Well, Ernie. thank you. Ernie, do I know you? No, I don't think so. How come you know me? Because I know every preacher in this part of the country. And you're not one of them. And I've been hearing about a gunfighter named Ernie Parsons and some interesting goings on in a town called Castle Walk. Now, don't believe everything you hear, Reverend. Oh, I don't. That's why I'm on my way to Castle Walk right now, to investigate these wonderful stories. Well, maybe you should get them a real preacher now. They seem very happy with the one they had. They had a gunfighter, not a preacher. God moves in mysterious ways. You boys sure do ham away at that phrase, don't you? <laughs> you really going to Castle Walk? I sure am. When you get there, uh, would you give these to a girl named Sally Underwood? Tell her they're just from an unknown admirer that thinks certain girls should have a trip to Phoenix, even if they don't get married. All right. Bernie, did you ever think that the things that happened to you in Castle Walk might be your call to the kind of work you've been destined to do? Reverend, uh, I didn't solve the problems of Castle Walk by praying them away. I did it the way I always do, with a gun. Now, did you ever hear of a call coming that way? But you left it a better place than it was when you arrived. You're a nice guy, Reverend. Uh, no, thanks. 
I'll be seeing you, Ernie.